Originally, Clonmacnoise was constructed entirely from timber. But by the 10th century, the church decided to make a statement. Like Europe, they began to build their sacred structures in stone. From a small timber monastery, it had spread to a busy medieval university town. Thousands flocked here to engage in its renowned centers of learning. Early Irish scholars are not in the least bit bashful about our position in the world because having adopted Christianity and having adopted the, the literature, if you like, of Christianity, the language of Christianity, which is Latin, uh, Irish schools are producing scholars which are every bit as good as what you get elsewhere in Western Europe. Ireland reveled in an intellectual and cultural renaissance producing glorious examples of Christian devotion. In Clonmacnoise, a completely unique art form was perfected. The Irish high crosses are extraordinary. Like ancient comic strips, they illustrated in three dimensions Christian ideals and stories married with intricate Celtic design. The Irish High Crosses are Ireland's greatest contribution uh, to the sculpture of Europe. Uh, and I think they're also a, a wonderful testimony uh, to the spirituality uh, of early Christian Ireland. Across Ireland, there are at least 50 High Crosses. But the cross of the scriptures at Clonmacnoise is considered to be the pinnacle of High Cross art. To protect it from environmental damage, it was transferred to the visitor center over 10 years ago. No one knows exactly when it was made, but the man who carved it may have created Ireland's most spectacular high crosses. But who was he? Historian Dovio Cronin could shed light on the mysterious sculptor. Using laser scanning technology, he and colleague Dr. Thierry Dobos are rendering the entire cross into sharp 3D relief. Well, it provides us with a better definition of the image that's on the stone. Because of the weathering, it's difficult to make out some of the details. But this kind of scanning brings out the detail much more clearly. The results could disclose a wealth of new information. Because the High Cross at Darrow, County Offaly, has already been scanned, and the comparison will tell us definitively if the same hand carved them. Dolby is also scanning a worn-off inscription on the base panel. We're going to get another horizontal sweep on it to get a better definition on the letters. If the technique can expose more hidden detail, it should uncover the letters of a name or even a date. People have argued endlessly for years and years and years about the date of the high crosses and, and all the experts have slightly different theories about it. So if we could pin that down and get a, um, absolutely get the inscriptions clear and read, that would be wonderful. What do you have at the top of the image? Laser scanning could solve a question that has puzzled experts for decades. A bit like the Tower of Roach, decorated one. Were the most sublime and iconic sculptures in Ireland created by one prodigious master artist? And particularly now that both of the crosses, both Darrow uh, and Clonmacnoise, the experts are joined by an authority on Irish high crosses, Peter Harbison. This is why I think uh, scans like. What will the scans look like side by side? Are there similarities in the technique, style? 
subject matter. This is the, the, the resurrection with Christ in the tomb, uh, and at the end of the tombstone you see a little bird which is breathing life uh, into Christ. It's the moment of resurrection which is at hand. Is that actually in the... The no, not at all. No, no. Uh, but you can see uh, very clearly that the, it's very much the same composition. And it should be said that this is an extraordinarily rare uh, composition uh, in art, and it's one of the earliest representations of the resurrection. Mm. Well, that's fantastic detail this here. Is mm. the shroud. Yeah, the shroud is just yeah. Yeah. the hood yeah. and the yeah. beading mm. around mm. there, the cowl there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that beading looks as if it's really heavy embroidery or something. Yes, 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 yes. Would you both say that it's the same person, or are they just using a pattern book that produces the same pictures? Uh, well, I think that the, the, basically they are using a pattern book, but I think that the details uh, of, the, of the faces, the helmets and so on, I think they're so similar that I would argue strongly in favour uh, of the same hand having carved both of those crosses. I think, I think we'd all be in agreement, more, more in really fact, that it very yeah. probably is the same hand. Yeah. Laser scanning has confirmed what the experts have speculated upon for decades. That Ireland harboured a 10th century Michelangelo. A prolific master sculptor who produced incredible works of art. But any clue to his identity is still a mystery. The inscriptions are too worn to reveal anything new. When the carving was complete, the high crosses were painted, rendering biblical events into full technicolor. This was potent magic the medieval mind. Over a thousand years ago, Ireland was a shining light and Clonmacnoise was the greatest of its many achievements.